Hey guys, welcome to The Forge, and today we will be looking at set number 76947, the Quetzalcoatlus Plain Ambush. This set retails for $50 Canadian or $40 USD for 306 pieces. This set comes with three minifigures and one Quetzalcoatlus dinosaur figure. This is the first set that we've ever gotten a new avian dinosaur type. It is the premiere of the Quetzalcoatlus, and I have to say that it is certainly a selling point for the set, for me at least. The Quetzal is about the same size as the plane, which is fairly big for a new bird type dinosaur. Taking a look around the back, we can see some of the play features here, such as removing the cockpit, being able to take off the propellers, and so on and so forth. Um, certainly shows a better landing on the back of the box than they did in the movie. Taking a look here, we can see in the bottom right corner how big the Quetzal was in the movie, as well as in the upper corner of the box we can see how big the Quetzal actually is in minifigure scale. Overall, this is a nice look at the box, but let's move on to the minifigures. First up, we have a Jurassic World classic, Mr. Owen Grady. Uh, taking a look here, this is a pretty typical print for this character. It's the same print that we've seen in a couple of the other sets here, so uh, this isn't an exclusive figure. He isn't special from the other sets, so uh, not much to say there. This character does come with an alternate face print right there, so you have that going for it. But other than that, it's just a nice detailed figure. Mr. Owen Grady. Next up we have Claire Deering. Now this version of Claire is a little bit more unique as we have this sort of cyan jacket that she's wearing which I don't think we get this many torso prints in this color so that already makes this figure a little bit more unique compared to her other iterations. Uh, looking at the backs, there isn't too much different, but again, this figure also comes with a different face print. Uh, pretty suitable for when the plane starts to fall out of the sky, I know. But that's just a quick look at this figure. Nice figure, just because of that torso print, in my opinion. Next up, we have Kayla Watts, who appears in one other set, and for a pilot character, uh, she has a nice detailed front print here. Nothing on the shoulders to indicate any sort of uh, rank or affiliation or whatnot, which I don't know if pilots ever do that, but I don't know. It's just kind of there. And the back print, we got a little nice upper ridge here, kind of like showing the padding on the inside of the jacket, which is a nice attention to detail. And uh, also, this character does have another face print. So, there we go. This character has another face print. It's... I don't know. It doesn't really convey too much emotion, in my opinion. It just kind of shows her teeth a bit. There isn't really anything either fierce or angry or worried about it. So I think Lego could have maybe done a little bit better on that regards. And maybe it's just me, but I think that the hair color is very bright and kind of off. But that's a look at Kayla. Let me know what you think of this new figure. And let's move on to the possibly best part of this set. And up next, we have the Quetzalcoatlus. 
uh, Quetzalcoatl, I don't know if I'm saying that properly, but we have the Quetzal, which is one of the largest avian dinosaurs probably to date, and it shows in this new Lego build. Uh, not build, but figure. So, as we can see here, <laughs> yeah, nice English. As we can see here, the Quetzal is very big, like, the wingspan on this thing is pretty massive. Like, here's a hand in comparison, just the wingspan. Yeah, this thing is pretty big. Here's an adult hand in comparison to the size of this Lego figure. It is large and massive. Like, I think it is, I don't know, I don't want to say, like, in size comparisons if it's the biggest we've gotten or not, but it's up there. It's relatively impressive. And as you can probably see, the there are joints here on the wings, so you can flap them up and down. You can angle them so that if it's like coming in to land, taking a close up on the face here, we can open up the jaws and it's quite a menacing grin or glare. <laughs> Would not want to uh, come into contact with that type of face. Moving to the back here, we can see that the feet actually have a little hole to clip things into it. So, for example, I'm just borrowing this from another set, one of my stud shooters, but you can fit a little post in there and it can clip on. So it can actually grab and hold on to items or maybe a fish, a branch, who knows, but it can interact with the environment, which is pretty nice and unique for LEGO to think of this ahead of time. Overall, I think this is a fine addition to the LEGO Jurassic World Dinosaur cast. Moving on to the main build of the set is the Midnight Euler, or so the side of the plane says. Now this plane is a fairly unique design and a nice addition to the planes that we've gotten in the past. As we can see here, it is a twin prop propeller with this interesting tail design in the back. I don't know exactly what we call that, but you can turn both of the props, obviously, and there's a few stickers on the set. You gotta put the lady on the side, and there's a sticker here and here on the cockpit, and a little bit on the side of the wing, kind of like the plane number, I guess, but let's just take a quick look around this thing so that you get an idea of what this thing looks like, what it took to build, just a slow pan around. It was really easy to build, a bit fun if you've ever built a Lego plane before. You can kind of understand what the experience is. Nothing too tough, nothing too difficult. Overall, I appreciate and like this design. Taking a look at the front here, you can take off the cockpit with a little bit of effort, but seeing here we got a little printed piece and a joystick for our pilot, Kayla Watts, to fly in. Uh, so you can easily just sit her in it down just like that. But also there is room in the back there to fit the two other minifigures. So they just squeeze nicely in the back there. Very simply, just like that. Everybody's all in there, they can all fit, and you can just put the cockpit piece back on and fly on. Moving on to the back, the plane does have a ramp that can be lowered down and a roof bit that can be lifted up for easier access and you can slide out of the back kind of like this little tray that has all of the little 
useful devices that you would need on this plane. So it's got a flashlight, it's got a wrench, and it's got a fire extinguisher. So all these things you can use to repair your plane, and then when you're all done, just put it back in here, the little cargo bay, push it up, close the top, and move up the ramp. And now you're ready to go. Another feature of the set, and if you've watched the movie, you'll probably know what I'm going to showcase, but the engines here can be unclipped. You can just pull them right off the front. They're held there with this little joint, as you can see, and that makes putting them on and off really easy and not with a lot of hassle, and so it could just put it right back on, just like that, as if nothing happened. And of course, you can do that with the other engine as well. Just unclip it off, clip it back on, use that wrench that's in the back of the plane, and you're good to go. As we've seen, this plane does have wheels so that you can move it forward and backward. Uh, one thing I do kind of not like about this plane is this front wheel. This front wheel is fixed in place. So taking a look at the underside here, you can see that the front wheel is just kind of pinned down so you can't turn or rotate it. And it makes turning this plane not impossible. Like you can see there, I can kind of push it around, but on its wheels, it doesn't really turn that well. And so trying to maneuver this thing like on a landing strip or whatnot is a little bit difficult. I originally thought that you could maybe just attach a, uh, like a, one of those two by two pieces with uh, the turnball joint in it, but no, you can't do that. What I would have liked instead is if, if LEGO removed that and they used one of these landing gear pieces that they've used before. They've actually used this on a helicopter set before in LEGO Jurassic World, and you could just pin it on the front there, and then now, bam, you got a plane that can turn and move around rather than just be stuck with this one wheel. I don't actually know if the plane in the movie had one wheel on the front, but having this plane landing gear piece just makes a lot more sense and it adds way more flexibility and maneuverability to this set. So why they opted to not have that to begin with is kind of puzzling to me. And I just would have preferred it with the landing gear instead of what we got. But that's kind of the one critique I have with this set. Now, I feel I would be doing this set a disservice if I didn't at least show the size of the Quetzal alongside the size of the plane. So here you go. <laughs> I would say that that is fairly accurate to what we've seen in the movie, in the trailers and whatnot. So just lift it up a little bit. As you can see, it is very big. The wingspan is almost the same size. So big Lego figure, big plane, uh, pretty film accurate or size accurate, I would say. So overall, what are my final thoughts on the set? Well, again, for the price to piece ratio, you're getting 306 pieces for $50 Canadian or $40 USD, which is a bit better price for piece ratio when you look at the other $50 sets in this line. For example, the Triceratops pickup truck ambush, that was the same price and you got less pieces than this set and just that big bird as well it feels like it adds a bit more value to this set as well so price to piece ratio i feel is a bit better with this set compared to the other one the other 50 dollar one in addition just getting that large quetzal 
is a real selling point for this set. The plane build is obviously pretty good, in my opinion. I think it's good, it's fine. It's like other LEGO planes we've had, but just in a different format. It's a different design, it's a different look, and that's something that I'm happy and okay with. I think it's a great playset. There's definitely something here for collectors as well, getting those dinosaurs. I know there are people out there who collect Lego Jurassic World dinosaurs, and the Quetzal is obviously a no-brainer. Other than that front wheel piece that I talked about earlier, I don't have too many problems with this set. Maybe, again, with uh, the stickers, for instance, the two cockpit stickers that connect right here on the side, those can be a little bit annoying, but the other stickers are fine. But what do you think? Do you think the price is justified? Do you think that this is a great set or not? Do you agree that the front wheel could have been changed, or do you think that I'm overlooking this? Let me know down in the comments section below. 